Hello, my name is Deandra Ryan Moss, and this is Say What? Introduction to JavaScript. We're going to be going over every piece of vocab that you need to get started with JavaScript. JavaScript. So JavaScript is a programming language, and it is specifically a programming language that's used for web development. When you go to a website, everything you see on screen is made possible in part by JavaScript. Console. So you may or may not know it, but every single web browser has a built-in place where you can program in JavaScript called the console. So how do you get there? Well, right click, hit inspect, and go ahead and click on the console tab. And there you go. You can start programming right away. If you're using a Mac, the hotkey for getting here is Option Command J. Keyword. In the JavaScript language, there are specific words that are designed to do very specific tasks, such as var, if, function, and so forth. It's easy to recognize these words because they'll glow a different color, in this case, blue, versus if I just typed out a random word that's not a keyword, like blah blah, it's going to appear in black. Variable. In JavaScript, we can save values that we want to use later to variables. Let me show you what I mean. So in order to declare a variable, we first need the keyword, var. Then we type the name of our variable, and then we can put a value in. So if I want to retrieve that value later, I just need the name of the variable. I can also reassign the variable to something else if I want. So what happens in this code is we first assign the value of Deandra to the name, and then we overwrite it with Steve. So name only knows the most recent value that's been saved in. We can also declare multiple variables, and even set variables equal to different variables. So notice that name is equal to Joe, and that's because Whatever variable name is on the left side will receive the assignment, whereas the variable name that's on the right side will provide the assignment. String. So one type of value that we can put into a variable is a string. And a string is just a chunk of text. It can be letters, spaces, numbers, just about anything on your keyboard. But the important thing to notice is that it must be in quotes. I can put it in single quotes, or double quotes, but I definitely can't mismatch quotes. As well, I can't leave off the quotes. If I try to do that, it's going to get confused. Boolean. We also might want to declare a variable to be equal to true or equal to false. Booleans just refer to something that's either true or false. That's literally the only two options. Types. In JavaScript, different variables will have different types. We've already talked about strings and booleans. Another example would be a number. Keep in mind that the number 24 is different from the string that contains 24. You can tell them apart by whether or not there's quotes. So if I'm ever curious about what the type of a variable is, I can use the keyword type of. So if I try type of name, I'll get string. If I try type of age, I get number. Notice that if I throw my age into quotes, the type of age has changed to string. Now there's a few other types besides strings, numbers, and booleans, but we'll go over those in a minute. Array. Another type of object in JavaScript is an array. Arrays are used for storing multiple values that have to do with each other in some way. For example, if I wanted a collection of different types of tacos, I could declare a variable called tacos and then assign it to an array of different taco types. Let's break down the syntax of an array. So we use brackets to indicate that we're declaring an array, and then we put all the different values we want inside of the array separated by commas. If we want to access a certain value inside of our array, we use bracket notation. So if I wanted the first thing in tacos, I would use a zero. That's because in computer science, we always start counting with zero. So that'll give me chicken. If I type in three, we have zero, one, two, three. So that's going to give me veggie. 
Notice that if I change the last value in this array, that will change what I access when I grab tacos at index three. I can also redefine that manually and that will overwrite what I originally declared to be inside of tacos. Object. Another type of collection in JavaScript is called an object. It's similar to an array in that it contains multiple related items, but slightly different in that it has key value pairs. To declare an object, you once again need the variable keyword and the name of the object, and then you use the curly bra brackets instead of the hard brackets. So, so each item in the object comes in a pair. First the label or key, and then the value. So in this recipe object, I have the ingredient as my key, and then the amount as my value. As with arrays, each of these pairs is separated by a comma. Conditional. Sometimes when we're writing JavaScript, we might want our program to behave one way sometimes and another way some other times. How would we do that? Well, with conditionals. So if I have a variable called raining, I could check and see if it's raining, then I want my activity to be read a book. Else, I want my activity to be go for a hike. So right now, raining is set to true, so activity becomes read a book. But if I change raining to false, the assignment of activity would be different. With conditionals, we can have as many different branches as we'd like. For example, we can first check to see if age is less than 18 and do one behavior. Otherwise, we can check to see if age is less than 21, do another behavior. Otherwise, we can check to see if age is less than 25, and so forth. So if I run this with my age, dang, can't run a car yet. If I change this down to 16, we'd get a different behavior. And notice that if I put in 30, which doesn't match any of these conditional branches, nothing happens. Loop. While programming, you often want the same lines of codes to run multiple times, and for that you use a loop. So for example, if I wanted to print off the numbers zero through nine, I could use this while loop. I have a variable that starts at zero, and I check to see that the variable is less than 10. I log it to the console, and then in this next line, I go ahead and I reassign i to be i plus one. Let's see what happens. Cool, I've looped through and I've printed out all the numbers I wanted. This line of code is really important because if we weren't incrementing i, it might end up looping for forever because it would never be less than 10. Let's see what happens when we get rid of it. Uh-oh, it's just sort of looping zero into infinity. That's what we call an infinite loop and we generally try to avoid those. So the while loop is just one example of a type of loop in JavaScript, but we'll get more into that in a different lecture. Well, that's it for our Say What introduction to JavaScript. You guys are ready to jump on in and start programming now.